Today, on the Australian Photography Show, we're going to learn about shooting rock music and live performance with the wild man of rock photography, Michael Wiley. We'll also compare Sony's bloggy to the iPhone 4 and see if you need it. This episode, we've got a real treat because I've got with me the wild man of Australian rock photography, Michael Wiley. And Michael, we're here at Amplifier. Of all the band rooms I've ever been in, and it's been a few, this is my favourite. Yep, it is pretty authentic. <laughs> because every band that's ever been in here has drawn something offensive on the walls. <laughs> and there's some things here that are never going to make it to TV, but we're here today to learn all about how to take great band photos. And Mike, what do you think makes a really great rock photographer? Uh, understanding the music you're shooting and the cameras, I think the thing I focus on with uh, my rock photography, photography is a communication skill, not a technical skill. It's just capturing a moment and the expression of, in music of what a muso is doing. Uh, so yeah, I don't try to get too tied up in the gear. I try to get more tied up in getting the moment, getting the timing, and then um, adding a bit of light and stuff to actually get that moment. But yeah, I think it's uh, it's musicians are communicating and you want to capture that accurately that's that's the in live stuff that's a gist of it, I think. and so do you go in thinking I know what this band's all about I'm going to try and bring that to the table or maybe try and change it in some way um, no I, yeah, I try and capture a shot that's representative of what the band's doing now there's a out there art rock weird band called Mars Volta the Mars Volta the Mars Volta who do some very their sonic it's just a sonic journey. The greatest band of all time. They I are. Think. You're an amazing band. Just my band. opinion, but yeah. yeah. And I, so you've shot them. Yeah, I shot them. Awesome. I shot them in um, at, uh, Metropolis, and I was. I wanted to get a shot which captured what they. A visual image of what sort of sound they're projecting. Which is mayhem. Yeah. So I, I, I mucked around. I tried some interesting stuff, and I chased the lead singer around on very slow shutter speeds, and looked at the back, the back lighting, the lighting on him, and I got a couple of shots which I think really captured it. But yeah, so I try, and get, I try and get a shot that represents the sound of the band visually. And what other bands have you shot that you've come away and gone, this has been a career defining night, I've just got shots that I couldn't have got any better? And I remember I shot Henry Rollins in about 92, and he was amazing. It was, so much energy there. Yeah, he was, he was close to the perfect performer, it was a great gig, there was good light, it was a crazy crowd. And I shot that gig and I left pretty convinced I'd got something which would define the gig, which is a shot I ended up getting. But um, yeah, so that's the, in the film, sometimes you, you click and you just, you know you've got it. And, yeah, yeah. and I've, on, a, on a few occasions I've just almost thought I can, I can stop shooting now because I know I've got it. You get back to the dark room and go, hmm, that's not quite it. So Di digital it. just changes all that, yeah, doesn't it? But digital now, you can see. So it's, it's a lot more immediate. So I can shoot a band now, and because um, I do a lot of weird blur stuff, and I've got to zoom in and see if it's sharp, because a lot of the movement stuff I do, you can look okay, you open, look at it on the monitor and it's blurry, it's, it's not sharp. So, mm. so I, um, I have to be a bit careful. If I think I've got the moment, I'll look at the back of the camera, then I'll later on I'll zoom in and make sure it's all sharp. But yeah, it's a bit more immediate now with digital. So now I pretty much I can know I've got it, but um, that, that thrill of pulling the neg out in the dark room and holding up the light and going, yep, that's it, that, that's something I do miss. And of course, the thrill of holding that negative up in the dark room and going, oh no, I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, so now, like... though, with digital, do you find that your shots might evolve through a set because it starts out one way, and once you start to see what you're getting, you start to get more ideas flowing, and you go, well, what if I try that? Because yep. you couldn't do that with film, could yeah, you? Yeah, with, with the way I will shoot a band, normally, if it's a big international band, they only give me two or three songs. So I'll try and get the safe stuff first, which is just a sharp shot of the lead singer's head. So you only get what, a couple of songs yeah, in yeah, your, yeah. your contract. I always try and get a shot of every band member in, which is a lot harder. Like it's it's like a it's like a matrix. One person, or a shot of one person, is quite easy to get. Then you get the bass player, the lead singer, the guitarist, the drummer, 
the more elements you add, the more you're shooting wide, the more light varies, the more... I mean, a drummer can look boring most of the time, but if they're doing this and this, it looks really cool. So then you start working out getting each performer in the frame looking good, and it gets harder and harder. If you've only got a couple of songs, it's quite hard to get that shot. That's right. So I normally leave a lot of gigs frustrated. But if it's Perth band, or if it's a band where I've got a bit of time, I can normally, um, like tonight, I should be able to get some cool stuff based on having a bit more time to work with the band, so. So your gear is obviously very critical. So should we go now and have a look through what you're going to use tonight, and you can talk us through how you're going to set it up. Yep, yep. All right, mate, lead the way, it's a catacomb, yeah? right. After the break, we'll have a look at the huge range of gear Mike uses on a shoot as we hear the killer teens and watch him in action. Michael Wiley is a trailblazer in the area of rock photography, working within tight shooting opportunities, low light and the madness of a mosh pit to try and bring the energy of music, especially rock music, to a still photo. Mike, every rock photographer needs a gaffer tape camera. What's the idea behind the gaffer? Um, initially it was just to keep it in good condition, stop it getting scratched up and beaten up at gigs. Um, then I went travelling overseas, started travelling overseas a fair bit and I was just, um, didn't like waving the Nikon logo around, so it sort of stuck. I think they look pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of sticky fingers overseas. <laughs> so talk me through, you've got two cameras that you bring to every gig and yep. a spare body. Yep. And they're set up very differently, so uh, what's this one in particular? Alright, this is my bread and butter unit. This is the uh, Nikon D3S, the new Space Age low light camera which is the most amazing camera I've ever used. Because low light is such a critical factor in your business, isn't it? Because yep, you yep. really can't use a straight flash gun on top of camera approach, can you? No, a lot of bands you can't use flash, so you've got to use a camera which works in low light. And this thing, uh, it's been out about a year or so, and it's, it can pick up far more than a human eye. It's an amazing bit of gear. Um, the lens is a 1424, which is a very wide angle zoom. It is. It's um, pretty much my bread and butter lens. Most of my live stuff I shoot with this. Um, from here, we go straight to the D300 with the 7210. So now I shoot from 150 to about 300. Really? So let's just go back a step. You've got one camera which is 14 to 24, which is really quite wide angle. Yep. And then nothing in the normal spectrum of focal lengths that people would expect to shoot portraits with. Yep. Straight to 150 tally. That's yep. right up there in the tally. Nothing yep. in between. Yeah, I, I never. I, I don't shoot much in the mid-range sort of range. And when I, when I got rid of my last lens, I just never replaced it. I mean, I find it just makes me work harder. The 1424, you've really got to get in, do your work. You've got to, it's, it takes a bit of talent to fill a frame, because obviously if you get wide, you just get dead material. And up from there, between 24 and like 150, it's, it's not a focal range to see photos that exciting coming out of. So from here I go to this, which is like up to 300 mil, so I can get very tight. So I can get at a distance, get the whole band in, or I can isolate the individual. And, and that's a 10. 10.5 fisheye. Wow. Now all those weird bendy photos. Well, there's a lot more to rock photography than even I knew, and I'm sure than you expected. The gig's not far away, man. I can't wait to see you in action. Really awesome. All right, let's watch Mike in action as he shoots punk rock outfit The Killer Teens. They're one of my favourite Perth bands at the moment. Mike, I love the killer teams. Great energy on stage. How are you going to approach shooting it? Um, as you can see from the shots I'm getting here, there's a bit of flash going on. I've got a couple of girls, or three girls in the crowd, which are lighting the band as I work. So that spinway you get there, that should be frozen in flash. So I'm, I'm trying to capture the, um, the sound you're getting to get a visual image of that. So a bit of movement, a bit of stuff frozen by the flash. So many photographers just shoot really static, normal shutter speed shots. You like to go for flow and movement, don't you? Yeah, I think that's what makes my work stand out a bit. And you know, it's what these guys are doing live, it's what the, it's what the crowd are seeing. Are 
you going to focus on the lead singer for most of the show? When I'm shooting wide angle, I'll tend to work on the lead singer and with the depth of field you've got, the guys around will tend to drop in. Um, the lead singer is normally the visual centre point of the shot, so that's what you want to get right. Having said that, a good shot, everyone's looking great, so I'll try and get everyone in, but yeah, this, the lead singer is like the, the key focus of the shot. smoke when it comes to getting a good shot as opposed to having no smoke? That's a good question. It's critical. It's absolutely critical. A lot of venues don't use the smoke and it, it makes the photographers work a lot harder and it's just not as visually exciting. I mean, when you look at that screen now you're seeing beams of light, but without the smoke you're just seeing spotlights. So yeah, it adds a lot of definition and for what I'm trying to do and with my movement and blur, it adds a whole layers of colour and it's, it, it just gives you another element to work with. So if it's not there, it's a lot harder than if you've actually got what they did tonight, which is a lot of smoke going on. because coming next is the headliner Project Mayhem and more great advice from Mike about live performance photography and album cover shots. Mike, a band that I've never seen before is Shitbird. Great name for TV, can't believe it. But uh, what are you doing here with them? This was a shoot we agreed to do for the EP they've got coming up. Um, they wanted some live stuff and then they said, look, can I shoot a bit of stuff which might be more suitable for an album cover or EP cover? So we just ducked outside for a quick five, ten minutes. Um, yeah, it came out pretty good. I mean, live the stuff was pretty strong and um, this stuff with the um, pen up button on the four fingers, it came out pretty good considering the time frames we're working under. I'll leave that to the viewer's imagination what that's all about with <laughs> shit food. Do you like that graffiti background that's really industrial? Yeah, it's a pretty universal urban sort of look and it yeah, just that adds that edge to a photo I suppose. So yeah, it works there for sure. Okay, I'm here with Ben. How are you Michael? I'm outstanding. Cool. Uh, looking forward to photographing a high-energy rock gig. Alright, just, just a bit of a rundown of what I'll be doing. Um, yeah. I'm going I'm to have a couple of assistants working with me holding flashes, running around, some um, attractive looking young ladies you'll be pleased to hear. Um, what I'm using is wireless flash, so the back of the camera controls what the flashes are doing. Right. So I might be here and they might be over there and it'll, um, it'll sort of throw the light, so don't worry about them, just sort of, actually just ignore me. But do your stuff, but if so, I can get you guys in close occasionally so I can get all the members in. Mm -hmm. Now I shoot very wide angle, so it might yes. look like I'm just getting you, but I'm getting the whole band yeah. in. So. 
That's about it. Have a cracking gig and do your thing. Thank you very much. Project Mayhem is so unique, and Benny Mayhem, such an amazing character on stage. How do you get the best out of him? Um, yeah, he's a bit overwhelming initially. He can be a fairly intimidating sort of live character, but um, I've dealt with Ben for a few years and know what he does. You, if you can work with him, keep him in the middle of the frame, and then sort of get the rest of the band members around him, which is what I try and do, you can get some really, really strong images. I mean, he's just got a great stage presence. Some of the shots later on, which I shot telephoto, so it's really zoomed in on him and the other guys, they came out really well, which is just a, a different approach aside from the wide angle. Mike, thank God for DJ boots. This one's nice and high, so you actually climbed up there and started shooting on a 45 degree angle, three times as high as the stage. What does that do for you? With the telephoto lens, it really compresses your frame. When you look at the shots I got from above, Benny is pin sharp and quite clear. You can also get the drummer in the background as well. So with the 200 300mm lens, you're really bringing, making a very tight frame. We're not up close shooting wide angle. It's very, very loose, a lot more movement and blur. But shooting from a distance with the girls pointing the flash in the right direction, I'm isolating elements easier or better. So you get a different, a di very different style of photography. So you get an element in the shot which is more defined than the wide angle. Now I like the wide angle blur and the attacking sort of approach, but it does give you a very different look getting the distance from the 300. Mike, that was that was awesome. That was rock at its best. We, I think, got some insane photos there from four high energy bands, eh? Yeah, it was brilliant. It was absolutely great thing to shoot. Oh yeah. So if you were going to leave us with the one thing that you've got to know to be a great rock photographer, what is it? Oh, it's a tricky question for the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's a passion for music and understanding exactly what each band's about, and that's what you do. I reckon you're right. Put it in, brother. <laughs> that, was, that was wrong. That's the end of the first series of the Australian Photography Show. Thanks to all the photographers that shared their skills with you. Thanks to Camera House, where you can buy the DVDs from this series in a great box set, including extras like the full gig you saw today. If you're on Twitter, you can follow me at Australian Photo. So thanks for watching. It's time to get out there and take some great photos yourself. I see vampires rise and fall out of the sky. I've watched history unfold like the iron butterfly. I've danced through life with diamonds on my feet. Along the road that runs right to my destiny